welcome to another episode of Indian Way with Johnny R, the podcast that records live from the southern shore of the mighty Red Lake. I'm your host, Johnny R, obviously. And I think today is Friday, if I'm not mistaken. Friday, Jan- January. January 7th already. This year is flying by. It seemed like it just started. And today is um, our last day. I think we're free. Free from our coronavirus uh, quarantine. So that's um, that's a uh, cause for celebration. But we're not going to celebrate because the numbers are sky- well, not skyrocketing, but I think the total today was 108 positive cases on the Red Lake Nation as of, I think, this morning. And it seems like, um, you know, the the information is a little slow to come in, but, you know, that's to be expected. I suppose there is a lot of uh, paperwork and a lot of data data is it data or data to verify which which i understand i'm probably a little hard on um you know the the tribal leaders but uh you know it's part of their job to hear hear um random citizens like myself bitch about them so but you know if they take it the wrong way i i do apologize and it's just um, we should demand a lot from from our tribal leaders, especially when they're not taking full advantage of the the uh, resources and tools available. But we'll get there. We'll get there. As for myself, you know, I think a couple of weeks ago I talked about you know how important it is for one to um, take care of themselves mentally and i've been in kind of a rut the last i don't know month or so and i just i just can't shake the feeling like i don't know i i don't know what it is you know i got a pretty um pretty good life you know i love everything about what's going on with my life you know, the wife and kids are healthy, and um, I have a lot of toys, you know, but I don't know what it is. I think it's, you know, you know, I see my um, my peers really getting it, man. They're, you know, they, they, I understand they sacrificed a lot. You know, I myself have sacrificed a lot for... Um, to, to pursue comedy and you know I'm getting a little impatient is, is what's going on I know there my peers have uh, probably sacrificed a lot more than I have you know you know um, they took a leap of faith to 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 pursue this dream <clears throat> and you know I, I realize that I, I'm I've never really been fully committed to it full time because I don't know. You know, maybe um, it's just something that uh, I could uh, look more into. But you know, I'm happy for it. Happy for them all, man. They're I, I've seen them uh, bust their ass to get where they are, and you know, I. I appreciate their dedication and uh, I admire it. And I'm just, just happy that, um, that that our people are making noise, you know, making noise in the mainstream and getting our voices heard, the indigenous voice heard. So hats off to them. You know, hopefully um, the rest of us are right behind you. So maybe that's uh, that's probably one of the... The main things that are bothering me, you know, you know, I, I should feel okay because I, I did book a um, book a, a gig, you know, 
a monthly gig for the next uh, five months. So that's that's one thing I, I, I can build on. And, you know, there, there are other opportunities out there that I should pursue. And um, that's the thing about about this, you know, I, I've always considered myself um, trying to be self-aware and I don't want to be a, a pest, but, you know, but that's not the right way of saying it, but, you know, persistent. I haven't been as persistent as, uh, as my peers and that's probably held me back or I just don't have it. And that's an that's another uh, harsh realization that sometimes you know crosses my mind. You know, like what if I don't? Have, what if I've I've just been you know lying to myself these last uh, twelve years? This is my thirteenth. No, shit, man. This is my thirteenth year in comedy. So I've been doing comedy as long as Stephen Curry's been in the NBA. So. And he's uh, obviously a lot more pop, more uh, popular and accomplished than that. Anyway, but check me out trying to compare myself to Steph Curry. But you know, like I said, I am trying to uh, trying to write more. And but today, I, you know that that funk. I mean, I just haven't been able to get past. You know feeling like uh i don't know man it's just it's hard to 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 admit that i'm not mentally where i should be maybe it's the weather maybe it's the pandemic maybe it's uh maybe it's just me being me you know the the harsh harsh realization but like I, I have come through far to, to give it up now. So, you know, 13 years. Well, shit, I'm actually, what, 15 years in all this media. I started in 2006. So I'm fifth, in my 16th year of uh, making making content. So, yeah, I've come too far, too far to give up now. So, but I'm just going to keep writing, you know, uh, keep podcasting. Uh, maybe it'll get a little uh, attention somewhere along the line. And if it doesn't, and God forbid something happens to me, uh, you know, all my friends and family can watch all my shit I put online. So, but then not all of it is for for, <laughs> for uh, you know family consumption, public consumption. I know I, on Twitter I go off like a motherfucker on Twitter, man. I just I forget who's all following me because you know the facebook crowd and the twitter crowd are two different animals and i just unleash on twitter because i know the twitter people can take it and the facebook people have a little uh hard difficult time um you know everything bothers everybody on facebook so i don't want to put anything up you know i don't want to be known as the a-hole fucking i am the a-hole so maybe i am maybe that's what i full-on heel <clears throat> i think i said that before turned full-on heel but you know but you know there, there are um things that could be coming my way so i will just uh uh hope things you know fall through come through is it come through or fall through fall through means fail right come through me i don't know i don't even know my words and i'm trying to be a writer for years i've been trying to write you know i thought i started a book in uh, 1999 pen and paper <clears throat> well actually yeah pen and paper i wrote i think i had about 12 pages and Probably just pure garbage, but it's it's all still up here, you know. It's just everything that I know, everything that I've experienced, good and bad. But then there's a, a part of me that that says, you know, maybe a lot of the experiences weren't seen the same way to to others. 
and it might be mis, uh, misconstrued. Check me out, trying to know big words. I don't even know if that's the, I don't even know what that means. Somebody, young Jamie, look that up, please. That's Joe Rogan. Never mind. But yeah, it, I know a lot of the things that I've uh, gone through have been um, uh, seen differently to others. You know, they don't they don't see it from my point of view, and that's led to um, I don't know disruption of the uh, the the dynamic and. But uh, I'm just going to continue on with the way I'm going because I know what's good for me and my family, you know, my wife and kids, and we'll just uh, keep on keeping on. You can either get on or get left. But, you know, sometimes I just want to, to, to um, share everything. But we'll get to that point. You know, I'm getting older, and I'm starting to uh, not care, <laughs> not care what's thought of me. And I don't know if that's just being the old grump that I'm turning into. But you know, there's a point where you know, I don't even give a shit anymore. You know, I'm 45. I'm gonna be 46 next month. Fuck, 46 years old. Man, if something ha did happen to me, I don't think all of my tales will be known, you know, except for my homies. You know, even some of my friends, uh, I haven't really been as open to uh, to sharing shit with uh, people lately, the past 10, 15 years or so, and before that, I was just an open book, man. You give me a few drinks, and I just spill my guts, and and people st still probably remember that. But you know, I don't drink as much as I used to. You know, I actually haven't been out in what over two months, and yeah, you know, I just might keep it that way because I don't like waking up with that um, hangover. You know, when the when the alcohol rages, you know, when it's withdrawals, the hangover. And the last time it almost got uh, uh, concerning. So maybe I'll just uh, start a, a new life on the red road or whatever they call it. But right now I'm, I'm fine with uh, waking up with, uh, with no alcohol coming out of my system. And... I remember the first time I had a really bad, like almost crippling panic attack was because I was hanging over. I remember it was 2004. We just got done watching, uh, I think it was The Rock and Walking Tall. And we we're coming back. It was after, after a night out. We went to the movie the next day and we were coming back from uh, the movie. And it, you know, and my, my panic attack, I didn't know what it was. I thought I was having a heart attack. I thought I was dying. I, I told my wife to pull over because she was driving. And I got out and I just paced along the highway for I don't know how long. And I would not get back in the car because I thought I was dying. And it got so bad, my wife got scared. So she took me back to, back to, took me, took me into the hospital. And could have swear swore I was dying. You know, I thought the, I thought I was having a heart attack or some kind of uh, aneurysm or uh, or something. I thought I was I thought that was it. I thought I was 28 years old and I was gonna die. But uh, the doctor diagnosed it as a anxiety attack and he gave me some Xanax and calmed me down. And I, I started, <clears throat> I, I was recommend, recommended, referred to a uh, therapist. Well, not a full-on therapist, but somebody that uh, helped me understand. Well, even then when I was, when it was being explained to me, you know, that uh, the alcohol, the hangover was actually a withdrawal because the alcohol was coming out of my system. And, 
and I didn't understand it. I refused to refuse to uh, think I was having withdrawals because I just at that time I was stupid and my light just fell. But for years it took me to it. Well, I don't know how long, but it took me. I think a year after that, I quit drinking for about uh, 2005. I quit drinking just, you know, to save my life at the time, I suppose. <clears throat> and for three years, I, I just quit drinking. And, and that was uh, 2005. And then uh, 2008, I went started going out again. And I actually had a, a not clearer vision of what uh, alcohol did to me, but I, I had a more um, understanding, a better understanding of alcohol. And, you know, it, it was still doing bad things to me, but I wasn't as uh, blind, I suppose. So that's what, uh, and ever since then, you know, I kept that in the, the back of my mind. So still out partying and still acting up and uh, still uh, almost ruining my life. And <laughs> it just gets, it gets out of hand, man. And it really does. And, but so fucking fun, you know, the, with, with the right people, I can just, you know, laugh and just people that are, are, aren't so sensitive that don't get butt hurt over, you know, getting made fun of. And those are the, those are the people that, that I usually surround myself with, you know, they just automatically, automatically, uh, you know, uh, uh, what's the word? Um, hover, you know, whatever you go to them or they come towards me. And I just, I just met a lot of really good people and, you know, I appreciate, uh, <clears throat> appreciate a lot of the friends that I've made the last, you know, 10, 15 years. And there's some really good dudes, you know, and I just like hanging out with them and sharing our stories and teasing and, you know, being assholes to each other. And, you know, that's, that, that's how, you know, you got good friends is when you can be assholes to each other, but not take it personal. Very hard to find. So. I, I stick close to them and um, yeah, that's, that's, I don't even know what the hell I was talking about. Oh, I had a good point. There was a point coming to me and then I, I fumbled it. I lost it. Something about uh, the way I see things and I don't know. What the fuck was I talking about? I don't know. I was listening to Joe Rogan. I've been on the road a lot. Well, not on the road, but made a couple trips for supplies. And, you know, listening to the Carrot Top. You, you had Carrot Top on this week. And, you know, just to, to, to hear the stories about comedy. You know, the, the sacrifices a lot of these um, successful comedians made. And... When I hear those, I, I, I know I cannot sacrifice that much to pursue a dream. You know, I, I, I will never leave my family again. Uh, I will not um, throw caution to the wind and not ever work. Because I, you know, I, I, I've always worked since I turned 18 and, you know, there are gaps in there because, you know, I, I get bored easily. And I'm a very picky employee and that should, I shouldn't admit that right now because, you know, but I do have a job right now where I think I can, and I'll, I'll stick with, you know, work with a lot of good people. And I actually miss my, my, my previous crew, you know, there are a lot of younger ones and I, you know, I, got along good with them and I, I miss being with them every day and you know just BSing and all that stuff and that was a good crew man I, I really like them and, and even before that the crew before that you know when I first started it, it was a lot of fun you know, not, it wasn't a lot of fun but you know people were, were easy to get along with and then 
towards the last you know year or so uh, it, it, it wasn't like that anymore so so i left people were being mean to me so i left nah fuck that i just just got sick of shit you know but where am i um i think that's all i got you know Miigwitch for listening, Miigwitch for watching, and also a reminder, February 3rd, we'll be going live on Facebook on the KFB, man, I'm going to blow this here, Where is it? oh, here it is, right here, I will be live on the KBFT Facebook radio station, that's the uh, Net Lake tribe, they're, um, Tribal Radio is having a um, comedy show. Me and another comedian will be there. Oh, we'll be live February 3rd. Uh, I think it starts at 7. And then March, I think I think it'll be March 3rd again. Um, I think, uh, yeah, we're going to put together some show, live comedy. Sh- not live. Well, yeah, they will be live, but they will be virtual. So the first one is February 3rd. I'll be hosting that. And then another one, March, April, May, and June. You know, once a month through June, we'll be doing that. So hopefully, uh, you know, that's uh, get, getting back at it. Um, trying to stay busy, trying to stay creative, you know, keep the creativity uh, juices flowing. And, you know, I'm still going to try and finish my uh, my script for my pilot. <laughs> it's so ridiculous. It's so ridiculous. It's fun, you know. It's just pretty much, you know, write what you know, and that's what I'm going to do. So it's a, it's kind of like a, fort, uh, a fortune, not a fortune teller, but uh, a look into the future where, where I think I could be going. So, but yeah, that'll be, uh, hopefully I finish that within, I'm going to finish it by the end of January. So, and then I'll, so hopefully uh, if other things pan out, I can use that and just, but yeah, but that's where we're at. And I, I don't, I, I would also like to congratulate um, the homie, you know, from the 1491s, from Reservation Dogs, and um, the Bark Skins, and uh, so many other things. Uh, Rutherford Falls, you know, McGeezy, Pensano. I He was named Indian Way Podcast Red Laker of the Year. So congratulations to McGeezy because I think he's probably the most uh, one of the the most successful Red Lakers out there right now. And, you know, there was a couple more that were right behind him. But, you know, I think Reservation Dogs and uh, Rutherford Falls put him over the top. And then season two of Reservation Dogs. And uh, I'm not sure if he's going to be. He'll probably be on uh, season two of Rutherford Falls. too. So. McGeezy Pensano is our Red Laker of the Year, 2021 Red Laker of the Year. First time I've ever given up. I've been trying to do this the last few years, but nobody's really stood out. You know, you know, we're all just, I don't know if we're just too humble or, or what, but yeah, McGeezy Pensano, Red Laker of the Year. Our first ever Red Laker of the Year on Indian Way Podcast. But uh, that's all I got, Miigwitch, for listening. Miigwech for watching, and um, yeah, we'll be back uh, whenever I get bored, whenever I get time. Miigwech!